Hey guys. Uh, I'll call this take two. I had some trouble setting up these uh, these leads on this guy and I wanted to have it prepped for us uh, before I started this this time. Um, so uh, this experiment 10 is all about uh, transistor switching. And uh, the idea here, without going into too much depth, is a transistor such as this guy uh, with his flat face pointing that way uh, has three pins coming out. We have a collector pin up top a base pin in the middle and a emitter pin uh, down below. And the current that flows to the uh, collector pin, um, a up to the entire current amount that's flowing in will be flowing out, dependent upon the strength of the signal being sent to the base pin. At least that is how I understand these so far. Because initially when I start working with the transistor. I thought it was more like a, just a straight up, hey, if any signal is sent to the base pin, it opens the channel and all the current from the collector flows to the base. But um, I then read on and it kind of emphasized the fact that these transistors, um, they're sort of like a, uh, you know, a current amplifier uh, based on the uh, signal sent to the base pin. So what I did here, um, this is really a more straightforward looking circuit than it appears. I just uh, tapped in um, in series with my uh, multimeter so that we can measure the current flow uh, flowing out of the emitter to our LED. And um, in terms of resistors at play here, the top resistor, uh, which is leading straight from our uh, positive, um, is a 180 ohm resistor. Um, this, you know, is uh, what's controlling the amount of current flow to the collector pin. And the second resistor is a 10k ohm resistor. And this is in series with the uh, momentary switch we have. That's also coming from a uh, positive lead. And this uh, is controlling whether or not any signal is being sent to our base pin. And then of course uh, the output uh, emitter pin of the transistor is connected to a um, what is this, a 680 ohm resistor. So, um, as I said just a moment, a moment ago, pun intended, unless this momentary switch is pushed, no signal by default is going to be sent to the, uh, the base pin of the transistor. So if no signal sent, no current can flow. So if I turn the power switch on, Oh, it's already on. <laughs> it, since that's on, you'll notice the light is not lit right now, and there is no current flowing through our LED. So if I push this, the light is on, and it shows that we have a current flow of 12 milliamps. So based on most LEDs, you can safely put up to about uh, 20, 20 milliamps through the LED to get it to full brightness without causing any damage. Um, so What's going on here is the resistor that's 10K, um, he uh, is obviously like, we'll say, you know, toning down the maximum amount of uh, current that could be flowing through the switch to the base pin. However, I believe if we were to take, let me check one thing for a sec here. What I'm checking to see is if the um, the current coming from here to the uh, uh, collector pin, that's going through a, um, we said that was a 180 ohm resistor. Right. So based on my calculations, I took, um, let me see here. I took, we had like 12 volts uh, coming in and they're passing through a um, 180 ohm resistor, which would mean the, the, pos the, the current flow uh, going through this first resistor would be one, two, three, 66.6, you know, six repeating milliamps of current. However, Let's pretend for the moment that 100% of that current flows through this transistor. Um, we know that we're only seeing, you know, when this is pushed, 12 milliamps. 
But we also know that we are flowing through a 680 ohm resistor um, on the way out. So if we were 100% flowing through, you know, uh, with, uh, 66 uh, milliamps worth of current, I'm trying to make sure I don't confuse myself here, um, we still have a little bit more resistance that um, we are going through. So let me see here. What I'm getting at is obviously we had an inbound, you know, the, the absolute max potential if we didn't restrict current flow at all would be 66 milliamps. But because this additional resistor is in play, um, combined with the strength of the signal to the base pin, we end up with only 12 milliamps actually making it to the light. So one of the things that this experiment recommended um, was, hey, let's, let's get rid of the switch and the resistor that are, um, you know, standing between positive and base pin, and let's use our fingertips to connect them, or just a fingertip to connect it. Um, because we're dealing with such a low uh, ampage on this project, this is, you know, like the, the power adapter itself is rated at, uh, I think the one I was given was like 500 milliamps with a kit. Um, so, you know, it's half an amp. Um, and we're certainly not drawing um, that much current um, through this circuit. So, you know, being able to touch it with a single finger is not going to cause too much harm, apparently. But uh, we'll soon see. So let me, um, let me turn the power off for a sec. And what I want to do, if I can do so without disrupting this uh, setup, it would be great. What we want to do is we want to yank the switch because we don't use it anymore. We're going to use our fingertip and we don't want to use the uh, 10k ohm resistor anymore. What we're really interested in doing here is um, okay, I'm grab my little pliers. Kind of helpful sometimes for pulling out the ends of these guys. I'm going to stick a longer lead so that I have a little bit more play. So this is going into the uh, common strip with the base pin of the transistor. And this guy is going to kind of live off in the open air for a second as well. So I think, let me confirm for my sanity that uh, the book actually did recommend this. <laughs> so we're going from the positive lead through a, the power's off right now, but eventually it'll be like, you know, me touching with my fingertips. I'm just going to kind of turn these so that they're easy to push. Okay. So the idea is, is we're going to touch these guys together. But we want to do so without directly touching the metal. We want like my finger to be kind of the uh, resistor that holds these together. So it's going to be like uh, it's going to be like that. That's the idea. And so we're going to see what happens and how much current ends up flowing now that we have increased the resistance to this base pin. Because 10K, um, just from personal experience from the past experiments, I know that my skin, especially when it's not, well, hmm, a little, little moist, um, if your skin is completely dry, uh, there's like virtually no conductivity whatsoever, which makes it very difficult for current to pass through your skin. So uh, that would definitely exceed the 10K ohm resistor we replaced. So what I'm looking to see is, is we should have less current flowing to the LED. And before we had 12 milliamps, so we should probably have, I don't, I don't even know, you know, maybe it really depends on the conductivity and how far apart the wires are, but let's just say like seven milliamps, I, I don't know. So let's give it a shot. And um, I think that is all we have to be concerned with. We've got our resistor on the uh, collector pin. We've got our resistor on the emitter pin and we will have our fingers acting as the switch 
that will be like that. All right, so we'll turn that on. And once we do this, this should automatically register. Oh wow, that's not very, uh, not very uh, much current flowing. One milliamp, it's just enough to turn that on. See? Very interesting. Barely anything gets through. So another thing I'll try is I'm going to wet my finger to increase the uh, conductivity here. And look at that. Now we've got 8 milliamps. 7 to 8 milliamps. Probably depends on like how steady I hold it. There you go. So when they're pretty close, between 6 and 8 milliamps. And that guy was definitely a lot brighter. Can't feel a thing on my finger. Um, so yeah, what we are showing is that overall, when we add resistance um, to the base pin, that uh, was, you know, the greater the resistance, the less current ended up flowing out the emitter pin. Now, the question I was trying to answer earlier in my mind, but it was, it's a little harder to do the math on the fly, was that, um, okay, so how, how little resistance can I add on this circuit? And what, you know, to, to, what is the max current? And in theory, let's try this out. Let's just touch these guys and see if that's going to be... See that? So I'm touching them directly. I was a little worried there that I might like blow my LED, but nope. And the reason for that is because, I mean like we've got another resistor here as well. So, and I knew that this guy was a fairly strong one. It was like 680 ohm. So, um, as we see, we've got like 13 to 14 um, amps, or milliamps, I'm sorry, of um, current flowing through this. So this was higher this was a higher amount of current than when we had the 10k ohm resistor on this base pin. So what we've shown is three different levels of current um, flowing through our LED based on what we are doing between power and base pin. So hopefully this has sunk in with you guys because it definitely has with me. And, you know, sometimes I think that these experiments seem a little mundane and just kind of uh, repetitive, but honestly, doing them really does make you learn new things. Like, even if they seem obvious, I highly recommend forcing yourself to do every component of these. You know, I, I may not always tape every single aspect of these experiments, but I try to capture the, the core components that I think will add, uh, add the most value. Um, so anyways, I will see you guys um, on experiment 11.